Hey, hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to try to answer a simple question. Is Linux better than Windows to run a game like Star Wars Jedi Survivor? We know that this game is poorly optimized, it's CPU bottleneck to the end of the world, and has one of the biggest stutter like feeling ever. Yes, ever. So, I don't know, like maybe Linux will be able to solve this issue. Let's find out. Let's start with a bit of context. I've been experiencing Linux gaming for more than a year. I've been streaming multiple games through this adventure. We battled in the street of Los Santos, ride through the fantasy world of Elden Ring, run the streets as a cat in stray. Killed so many spiders, like so, so many spiders in Hogwarts Legacy. E even more than that. Survive the darkest places in Dark and Darker. Almost. Killed thousands of devilish creatures in Diablo 4. Grinding the rank in solo queue Apex Legends for hours and lately won some serious crazy fight as a Jedi in the latest Star Wars game called Jedi Survivor. But I never ever shaped some type of benchmark with you guys. And the reason behind it is I, I never thought that I needed to. I sincerely thought that you looking at my gameplay will simply suffice. For me, it was more accurate to show you the gameplay and the fact that the game was not stuttering on my side. I always felt like the game was smoother on Linux. And I'm not the only one who mentioned this experience. For example, a lot of users who both use Windows and Linux notice that a game like Elden Ring is running way smoother on Linux than on Windows. If you don't believe me, like just, just Google it. And, and you, will, you will see a ton of topic about it. On top of that, Achieving a good benchmark required a lot of accuracy while we gather the data. And this is something I was not willing to do at the time. But lately, I changed my mind. Uh, certainly because a lot of you ask me for number. I had to try to find a way, actually an accurate way to deliver that. Now, let's check the hardware specification of my PC. I'm going to list everything here and like that you can pause the video and watch all in detail. If you want to see more detail about my PC and how it looks like, I'm, I'm going to share a link of the video I created when I build the PC. Now, let's check the software I did use for both Windows and Linux. Again, I'm going to make a list here and you're going to have to pause the video to see all the details. The game itself is running through Steam with the latest patch, the 3.5 patch which was the second patch they released after the launch of the game. That was the latest patch at the time I recorded this video. Maybe when you watch this video, we're going to have new patch and the performance is going to be increased. But this is just a snapshot as, as it was for this patch. Now let's talk about the methodology. There is no benchmark tool within the game. So my idea was to run the first level as fast as possible. And then when I arrive at a certain point, after around like 10 minutes of going through the game, I will end the capture of the data for the benchmark. So I know it's, it's not perfect science, but it will still give us a solid idea in terms of performance and stutter feeling. So to make sure like anything was altering the benchmark itself, I decided to run the benchmark without recording via, via OBS, which means like the recording you are watching right now was another recording I had to do after uh, grabbing the data. So here are the results. And yeah, I know my voice sounds really bad. And the reason why is like I've been sick, but <laughs> what I'm going to do about it, you know, still have to do those video. So I apologize for that. Or maybe you like the old man uh, uh, smoker type of voice. Hey, baby, <laughs> is it Barry White or is it Air Max? Okay, okay, uh, I stop the joke. Let's start with Windows 10. When looking at those numbers, there is like two big takeaways you can grab from those. The first big takeaway is that the game in the average FPS is actually pretty high. We are running at almost 110 FPS, which is awesome. 
uh, compared to the first version of the patch, listen to me, like, this is pretty good. But the other side of the story is telling you that the 0.1 minimum FPS are so low, 13.9, which is like almost like 10% of the average FPS. And even if the 1% minimum FPS is above like 60, with a 65.3 FPS, each time you're going to run into the 0.1 minimum FPS, you're going to feel like a big stutter, like a big halt in your, in your feeling of the gameplay. And I think those numbers are really representative because you will go from a really smooth experience to a like tough stutter. And that's, that's what most of the users on Windows, Windows 10 did report. Uh, let's, let's look at the Linux Zen number. Whoa. And those that just want to say, whoa, the average FPS is not really far from Windows 10. I was expecting this number to be a little bit lower, to be more around like 100 FPS. So I'm pretty pleased by that because you have to think like this kernel is not even customized. This is just the Linux Zen kernel. And the performance in terms of average FPS is pretty on par with Windows which is awesome when you when you have to think that all uh, the library has to be translated through proton so this is really really good then you look at the 0.1 minimum fps and this one literally baffled me so obviously this is still bad i would have loved to have a 0.1 minimum fps a little bit higher to be more around like, you know, like 40 or 50 FPS to, to feel like the stutter, like a little bit less than, than this number. But compared to Windows, it's actually incredible. The lowest 0.1 minimum FPS on Linux is almost three times higher than the one on Windows. And this could explain the feeling I had and also some of users had on previous games when they were feeling less stutter while running Linux. And this is translated here with number. You, you can see it with your own eyes, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, like I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by that. Now let's take a look at the, the last one, the customized compiled kernel. So I choose TKG CFG, uh, CFS. So I use the TKG uh, CFS version because I, I did some tests and compiled like all the other versions. There is a BMQ, there is a PDS, there is a TT. There is different like uh, algorithms that kind of like give you a little bit up, like up in performance. And uh, I, I've been testing them. I never benchmarked them, but I just tested them. And I, and I felt like the TKG CFS was the one was giving me the most like responsiveness, responsiveness in terms of latency. This is what I'm really looking after. Obviously, I like high average FPS, but what I'm really looking after is like decreasing my latency at the max. That's why I included it in this benchmark. And what you can see in this one is that the average FPS is actually the bigger one. This kernel is beating Windows 10, believe it or not. So it's not beating it by a lot. Uh, we'll, we'll go into the uh, next, you know, like uh, statistic benchmark uh, page to see the actual percentage. But it's still beating Windows. Okay. And it's also beating the other kernels then. Like I would say like the percentage difference between like those numbers is not that high to say like there is a big bump. But... It's still funny to notify it here. Um, like the margin of error, it's like maybe around like two or three percent. So I guess we are in it. Like the performance is the same, but it's just funny that in this test, it was a little bit higher. Now also, uh, so in both in 1% minimum FPS and average. And also the 0.1 minimum FPS is more aligned to the Zen uh, kernel than Windows 10. So it's still beating Windows 10 a little bit less than the Zen version, but I would say like uh, still beating it in a fair way. And uh, when, when playing like in between the Zen and the TKG CFS on this game, I couldn't feel any difference because you are playing on a controller. It's a single player game. 
latency is important, but it's not that important too. But those numbers are just awesome, okay? So if you were still doubting about Linux, well, it's time to stop doubting about it because those numbers, they speak for themselves. So now let's watch this, those, those graphs. And what I've done, like I created a base of 100% for Windows and then compared like the, the different like uh, performance increase or decrease uh, compared to Windows for the, the Linux kernel Zen and the Linux TKG uh, CFS kernel. And as you can see, uh, and I was mentioning like uh, the performance in terms of like uh, average FPS is really negligible. It's almost the same. I, I can say really like is, is 3.2% really that big in terms of like a difference between Windows 10 and TKG CFS, I'll let you decide. For me, it's, it's just like a margin of error, especially with the way I did benchmark those things. Concerning the minimum FPS, I can, the 1% minimum FPS, I can tell like they are a little bit lower than Windows in general. But the good news is that on, on, on Linux, the 0.1 minimum FPS is just like way above. So I don't know how it is possible. Um, I'm thinking maybe because the way like Proton is translating like all those those information, maybe give it give it some type of buffer, and this buffer help like negligate like the 0.1 percent minimum FPS and give like, give a little bit more of smoothness. I, I can't really tell because I don't know exactly how it works. I would love to have someone maybe in the comments, someone who will know in depth like how we could explain that, but it kind of like aligned with what I was saying just before is that it, it's just incredible is that the 0.1 minimum FPS are just like way higher than on Windows. And from a pure experience standpoint, you know, without the number, yeah, I, I would be able to tell you, yeah, it, it feels smoother, but I can't really explain it because when I look at my average FPS, sometimes it's a little, it's the same as Windows, or it's a little bit lower, but I can't really you know, explain it with words. And I think this graph is a really nice way to show it to you. So, huh, should have believed me, huh? How can I conclude this video? Well, it's, it was my first attempt to do a benchmark and deliver it to you guys. And I didn't choose an easy benchmark. I choose to do a benchmark between two operating systems on a broken game. But you can see the advantage of Linux toward Windows in this specific area and how smoother it feels and how the number like kind of like align with what I've been saying for more than a year now. So moving forward, I would like to know if you want to see more of those videos because I have a ton of IGs and I want to know if you like them. So please like give a thumb up, uh, leave a comment down below maybe telling what you think of, maybe there is some detail I totally forgot. Or uh, maybe you want to add like more data, more graph, something that would be really helpful for you guys to, to have an idea of the difference of performance between Windows and Linux on specific game. I think it's, it's really interesting. Um, and also like if you want to watch specific game, because I have a ton of game in my library, I don't even know where to start. So just, just tell me in the comment below what game you would like to like, and I'm going to try to deliver more and more benchmark. I, I hope my voice will feel better too. That would be great. Also, if this video gave you any type of value or entertainment or anything, please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, rewind, rewatch the video, watch my other video, uh, share the video with your friends, subscribe again and again um, please uh, if you want to help me financially you can also become a member of la creme de la creme club and come and spam those emotes while i'm streaming and also like you can uh, become a member of my patreon to, to even support me like further guys thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next one hopefully my voice will be fixed hopefully <laughs> take care